the consequences of humanity observing itself expand across the cosmos. If a species is to survive and become dominant, it must strive to expand. With this in mind, mankind's sights are firmly set on colonizing the universe. But are there any downsides to this? Could the spreading of our race have a negative effect on our kind? What are the consequences of humanity observing itself expand across the cosmos? Number 4. We Get Jelly are those who want to leave Earth the kind of people we want to populate our cosmic colonies? Whenever I hear someone say, I just want to get off this planet, it's usually because they've been triggered by seeing a man with long hair working at the bank. The selection process for early colonization missions will be necessarily harsh, with applicants accepted only if they are emotionally and physically up to the task. The last thing you want on an isolated moon base is for some lunatic to go opening the airlock because he wants to take a death stroll. Yes, I'm looking at you, crazy plant guy from the Martian. You know what you did. You made Matt Damon eat ass potatoes. This may change when colonies are established and less stringent criteria are required. But how low will those in charge of the colonization process be willing to set the bar? Because, let's face it, you're going to have to pass a test to be granted passage aboard an interplanetary vessel. Migrating between countries is hard enough, with the most desperate people being forced to cross the ocean in a rickety boat to reach their destination. You can't exactly do that when the ocean is replaced by a multi-million kilometer expanse of deadly space. Mankind's first colonies will be heavily financed by private enterprise, and they will decide who stays and goes. This situation will inevitably lead to jealousy here on Earth. Our cosmic outposts could gain a reputation as arcs for the elite. It is therefore my suggestion that all off-Earth colonies should prove their commitment to equality and include at least one crew member who has owned a pair of truck nuts. Number 3. Breakup even if mankind is proportionally represented when it colonizes the cosmos, each of our independent colonies will still form distinct personalities and interests. Martians might be environmentally friendly after working hard to terraform their planet. Perhaps people of methane-drenched Titan will consider farts a friendly greeting. And if there's a colony on Pluto out there in the sticks, they gotta be racist. Opinions can vary wildly over the dinner table, and even further over national borders. These differences will increase as the distances between human outposts grow ever farther. With no instantaneous contact possible between our various worlds, how much will the politics, ethics, and culture of humanity diverge? And if it goes too far, will conflicts emerge from our differences? The latter would be more easily prevented if our colonies formed under one union, but this is not a likely scenario. Something as simple as a boundary dispute over resources could erupt into a multi-planetary war between nations and corporations. And as cool as that sounds, it may set a devastating precedent. Because who's going to act as the authority over these territories? America likes to think it keeps order on Earth. But if one colony goes rogue, who gets to play space police? And will racist space cops pull over more spaceships driven by people from Jupiter? Because we all know what those guys are like. Nobody says it out loud, but we all think it. Number 2. We Change Humanity changed forever when early Homo sapiens ended their hunter-gatherer existence and began to form into agricultural societies around 10,000 years ago. From here, mankind evolved small farmsteads into villages, towns, cities, nations, and empires. Our way of life transformed in the blink of an eye, having spent 90% of all human history hunting for berries, chewing on yetis, and sucking sap out of tortoises. At least, I think that's what we ate back then, 
I don't know. I wasn't there. When humans become an interplanetary race, it's possible this too may affect a great change in how our species behaves. We might become reckless now we've got several planets to ruin. Perhaps we'll develop a grandiose sense of purpose similar to manifest destiny. Mankind is already firmly entrenched within the process of globalization, but how will our way of life change when our collective focus is no longer unity, but separation, expansion, and exploration? These changes will be felt greatly within the colonies, but back on Earth, society will undergo a major upheaval too. The colonies will one day outrank Earth in terms of population and power. Former NASA Administrator Michael Griffin was quoted as saying that, There will be more human beings who live off the Earth than on it. We may well have people living on the Moon. We may have people living on the moons of Jupiter and other planets. We may have people making habitats on asteroids. I know that humans will colonize the solar system and one day go beyond. Depending on how good life is in our colonies, Humanity as a whole may come to view our homeworld like we do the cradle of civilization now. Humans moved out of Africa to settle in more temperate places suited to comfortable living. Could this be the case on other worlds too? Might Earth become seen as somewhere that is important and to be respected, but where nobody wants to live? Conversely, Earth may be portrayed as a place of privilege where only the finest people are allowed to reside. Space colonization has been put forward as a potential solution to Earth's overpopulation as far back as the 18th century. So, when the colonies are filled with so-called undesirables forced off their home planet, how long before the people tire of their exoplanet existence and return to reclaim their Earth? Number 1. New Species when a species is introduced to a new environment, it takes time to adapt. Humans will have technological help to adjust on worlds with low gravity, prolonged periods of darkness, and nothing to drink but their crewmate's urine. However, over a long enough timeline, we can expect the genetic makeup of non-Earth-based humans to evolve too. Eventually, off-Earth colonists may become an entirely different species. Dr. Scott Solomon is an evolutionary biologist at Houston's Rice University, and in a recent article written for Nautilus, he backed up this assertion by saying, While speciation on islands can take thousands of years, the accelerated mutation rate on Mars and the stark contrasts between conditions on Mars and Earth would likely speed up the process in just a few hundred generations, perhaps as little as 6,000 years a new type of human might emerge. Some scientists disagree with Solomon's assessment, since 6,000 years is not particularly long in terms of evolution. The Homo sapiens species of anatomically modern humans has existed for just 200,000 years, and Dr. Chris Impe of the University of Arizona believes it would take a similar amount of time for a new species of Martian human to emerge. However, Dr. Impe was also quoted by NBC News Mock as saying, Changing enough to look physically distinct would be much quicker, tens or perhaps a hundred generations. It is interesting that both of the experts quoted on Martian human evolution agree that it would happen eventually. So whether it takes a few thousand or a million years to kick in, what would a race of Martian humans look like? We're going to try to answer this in our bonus video, Martian Humans, Big Boned and Orange, which you can watch in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then bullsh**. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of Reality. 
reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.